This is the first class, just an introductory class for you. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, suitable for anyone, um, kids, adults, uh, just moving quite a bit and uh, just enjoy the movement, keep things nice and easy, just move slowly and sensitively in and out of postures, nothing too hectic and uh, we'll feel good at the end is the goal. So just come towards the front of the mat or if you don't have a mat, you don't really need a mat, you can stand off a mat just as easy. Um, so take your hands together, bend your knees. Then at first we're just going to lengthen the back and just get the spine moving a little bit, just to, just to start off. So we start by just taking our hands down by our side, pushing the hands down and back, rolling the shoulders in. Then the hands come forward and we push our wrists away. Wrists just pushing away and fingers facing down. Then hands out towards the side, pushing the hands nice and wide. Then the hands go forward and up and the shoulders are going high. The shoulders are going forward and up and we're trying to just drop the hips down. So lengthen your back. From there, maybe lift the heels and push the hands down and back. Roll the shoulders in. Bring the hands forward, push the wrists away, bring the hands wide, press them wide and fingers facing up, then hands go forward and up. And this is just about lengthening your spine, bending your knees, dropping your hips down. Heels go down and just leave your right hand up, move your left hand down. From there, you're just gonna move your hips over to your right. So bending that right leg, you straighten the left leg, maybe lift it up and you're lengthening that right side of the body. So nice lengthening of that right side of the body. Just really loosening out that right side of the trunk. Left toes touch down, your left hand goes up, your right hand goes down, and you push your hips to your left. So pressing the hips to your left, bending that left leg, maybe lifting the right toes off, balancing here. Just lengthening out this whole right side of the spine. Face staying relaxed and just breathing calmly. Right toes touch down and the hands, both hands go up and we just let the spine lengthen by reaching the hands high and dropping the hips down low. Then we just take a little twist, reach your hands out in front, take your right hand back, look forward at that left hand. If you wanna make it a little bit more challenging, you can lift your right foot, maybe lift the knee up. Nice little twist. If you're really adventurous, you can lengthen the right leg out a bit. Smooth down, right arm goes forward, and then our left hand goes back, just taking a nice little twist. Maybe lifting the left foot, you can lift the left knee a little higher, taking a nice little twist. Smooth down. And then we bring ourselves to standing pretty close. If you have a mat, come towards the front of the mat, bend the knees, bring your backs of hands together and then reach the arms up and look up towards the ceiling. Bend those legs and lengthen your back. So you're just gonna bend the knees, bring your hands down, bring your head down. Let your head hang for a moment or two. Then look forward and lifting your gaze up, come to your fingertips. Then your right leg lifts up and back. Right leg nice and high, hold it up there for a moment or two. Lower it down slowly, put your knee on the ground, right knee on the ground. Look forward, lift the chest, look forward and up. Then round your back out, head down to left knee. Up with the hands, reaching them high, looking up towards the hands and really reaching high. Then our hands come down. We take our left toes, turn them out a little bit, lift the left heel and then bend the elbows, bring the head down. Nice and gentle, ease up to upper plank, and we come to kneeling, so kneeling plank. So you're trying to not let the spine drop too easily, keep the uh, top of the hips up and the lower ribs from dropping down. Come forward and down to a lower plank, nice and gentle, just pausing here. So your shoulders, elbows, hips, head, all around the same height off the ground, then all the way down. Hands are forward, Lift the chest a little bit, have a look forward, lengthening the back, sorry, lengthening the front of the spine as your back shortens a little bit. Let your heels kick out to unsquash the back. Relax the abdomen. Take your hands by your lower ribs, 
move your shoulders down to put pressure into the ground to help you lift up. So you come up to lower plank. So your lower back is nice and long. Your upper back is lifting up a little bit. And then we come on up to kneeling plank. Look to your belly button. Then lift the knees, come to a downward dog. So you walk the feet about hip width apart. Keep your chin in towards the throat. Your lower ribs are drawn in. Your chin is in towards the throat. And the arms are straight. Face relaxed. Here's a good place to kind of pull a few uh, facial... Uh, just stretch out the, the, the muscles of the face and move the jaw around. Pull a few wild faces just to get rid of any tension held in the, at the face. Bring your chin in so you're looking towards the belly button. Then bend the knees, walk forward. Keep the knee bend, look forward. Now your left leg is going to lift up and back. Left leg lifts up nice and high and back. Keep it up there for a moment or two. It lowers down. Your knee goes to the ground. Like last time, you lift the chest and look forward. And then you round the back out. Head goes down towards your right knee. Up with those hands. Reaching the hands high. Look up towards your thumbs. And smooth down with the hands. Here we turn the right toes out and your right heel lifts a little bit. Just, this is just to free up the right hip a little. Your arms bend a bit and your head comes towards the ground. You gaze towards the back knee. Then ease up, nice and gentle, coming to a kneeling plank again. So a kneeling plank, you're finding the spine nice and straight, not letting it sag down to the ground. Come forward and down to a lower plank. Then you lie all the way down. Reach your hands forward, lift the chest a little bit. Relax the face, relax the forehead. Hands come back by your lower ribs. Your shoulders press down rather than up because we're trying to put force down through our hands as we come to a lower plank. Look towards the ground, up towards a kneeling plank. And then your chin comes into your throat and you lift your hips up and back, coming to a downward dog. Here, your back of the neck is lengthening out so your chin is towards your throat. Your lower ribs are in. Your back is nice and long. And you can walk the legs out a little bit here, just loosening out the hips and the back. You'll probably feel good to do that. From there, we bend our legs, walk the feet forward. Keep that nice knee bend and look forward. Then allow your head to move down towards the ground. Lengthen your back. See, I'm bending my knees a lot so that my knees and chest can come together so that my back lengthens. Then we look forward, lift the chest a little bit, and then one more time, just let the head hang down. Relax the face, relax your, maybe close your eyes for a moment. Just hang here, let the back release. No big stretch in the back of the legs, okay? Just bend the legs more. So you're lengthening your back rather than stretching the back of the legs. Your back of hands come together, and we slowly bring the thumbs up by the heart, then we reach the hands up and we look up towards your thumbs, then hands come down. We'll just try that again. So coming towards the front of the mat, back of hands together, reach the arms up, look up, bend your knees, bring the hands down, head down. Then look forward, your right leg lifts up and back. You can keep the right leg nice and high for a moment. Reach it a little bit higher if you can. Keep a little bend in this left leg. That'll keep you stable at the left knee and the left ankle. Lower that right leg really slowly towards the ground, but this time keep the back leg straight. So the back leg stays pretty straight, not bending to the ground. Look forward, lift the chest a little, then round your back out again, bring your head towards the left knee. Now push down with your feet. Feel like you're pushing the ground apart as your back of hands together and reach the arms up. Lift the chest, look up towards the hands. It's okay to have a little bend in the back leg. From there, look, look down, and just like we did at the start of the practice, just lengthen your back. Bring the back of, bring the palms down, roll the shoulders in, lengthening the back out. Then we lengthen the front out, bringing the hands forward, lift the chest a little bit, hands go wide again. Then from there, hands go up and forward. Look up perhaps if the balance is there. Now it's a bit tricky, so looking down is a bit easier for your balance. Look up if the balance is there and it doesn't hurt your neck. Bend, 
that front leg nicely as you reach forward those hands, fingertips go down, your left toes turn out and we lift the left heel if that's okay with you. Stay here, this is loads, or else you're lifting this left heel, the left knee is falling out to the side, and you bend the elbows a little bit, and the head goes towards the ground. Now don't worry about forcing the head towards the ground. Don't worry if the back knee bends a little bit, that's okay. You're trying to lengthen your back out as you free out that left hip. And up we come towards an upper plank. So this is where it gets a little bit harder if you choose. Your knees can stay on the ground and make it easier to go down towards the ground, or else your knees stay off the ground and you come forward and down towards lower plank. So your shoulders and elbows are the same height off the ground and the head and you look towards the ground. Then all the way down, your hands come a little forward and pull with the, pull the hands, pull the ground towards you, lift the chest a little bit, relax the abdomen, kick out the heels. Then coming up from here, we need to be nice and smooth and steady. Your hands come back by your lower ribs, your shoulders push down, so you feel like you're pushing the ground away with those hands, and then you just pick up the front of the hips and the lower ribs lift a little bit off the ground. Then you can stay here with the knees on the ground or come off the ground and come up to an upper plank. So you're lifting up between the shoulder blades and in an upper plank. Then we come over the toes to a downward dog. Maybe walk out the downward dog a little bit. See how things feeling are feeling. And from there we bend the knees, walk the feet forward. Keep that knee bend, look forward. Knees and chest touch. Then left leg lifts up and back. We just do the other side. So left leg lifting nice and high. Again, there's a bend in the standing leg, this right leg, because that helps stabilize the right knee and the right ankle. Left leg, you can move the toes around in the air if you wish. Relax the face. Lower that left leg really slowly. Don't just let it drop down with gravity. Just lower it slowly. Push the ground apart. So you're putting force down through both feet as you look forward. Then head down to right knee. Back is long. You bend the back leg a little bit just to give yourself, make it a bit easier for you to reach the hands up. Shoulders go high. Then again, lengthen your back. Hands push down, roll shoulders in. Hands move forward, wrists move away. Hands go wide. Press those hands nice and wide. Then hands come forward and up. Maybe look up. Okay, to look down, it's easier for the balance. Then we want to lengthen our back out. So we're lengthening our back out, we're lengthening our back leg, our fingers come down, our right toes turn out, our right heel lifts, and again, the right knee is just falling a little bit out to the side. Here we're freeing up this right side of the lower back and this right hip, and lengthening the muscles on the right inner thigh too. The elbows bend a little bit, stay there or else your head goes towards the ground. Then easing on up to an upper plank, your right leg steps back. So you're in upper plank here, so try not to let the hips sink down so easily. You lift up, so you're pushing the ground away with those hands. The arms are straight. You're pushing the ground away with the feet too, if you can. Stay with the legs straight, or knees to the ground as you come forward and down. I'll do the easier option for now. So knees go down, you can have straight legs. Come forward and down towards the lower plank so that your shoulders and elbows are the same height off the ground hips as well, same height. Stay here or maybe straighten the legs when you're here. You'll warm up a little bit here. Knees go down, lower everything. Hands come a little forward, just lengthen your front of spine. So you're getting a little bit of shortening in the back, lengthening in the front of the spine, but don't force, don't feel if there's any pinching in the lower back, don't go too high. Hands come by your lower ribs. You push down with those hands, coming to a lower plank, so knees can stay on the ground or knees off. As you come up to upper plank, you can be on the balls of the feet, or you could be on the fronts of the feet if you're, if you're there, that's fine too. Then chin in to your throat, come to downward dog. See how things are feeling in downward dog, just move the hips and bend the legs. So you bend one leg, then straighten the other. As you turn the hips from side to side, kind of makes the hips free out a bit. And then keep the arms nice and straight. Bring the chin in towards the throat. Lengthen your back out. 
bend your legs, you walk the feet forward. If you like, you can take a little jump of the legs forward. And then from there, have a look forward. Keep that knee, knee bent so you keep the knees and chest together unless you're super flexible. Then your head goes down towards your shins. Let your back release. Up with the hands. Look up. Reaching those hands high. Now hands down by your side. So there are the salutations. You can rewind and go back and do those again if you like, or go on to the next little sequence. So the next bit, we're going to work on some standing postures and uh, we'll take, the, take ourselves towards the front of the mat. And from there, you just keep that knee bent. You take the hands together and then we're going to take the left leg up. So lift the left knee up towards your left elbow and then bring it back behind you. Try and balance here and lower it down way back. So you've got quite a long stance here. So you're using most of your mat if you have a mat. Your left toes turn a little bit towards the front and then your front leg bends a little bit. So your hands are to the waist and then this is just a, a nice set of posture. For, for, so for all of these standing postures, your back leg is nice and straight. Your front leg will vary between bending quite a bit and being straight later on. So we're trying to push the mat apart here. So we're pressing the mat apart. Your waist turns towards the front. Your right arm just rests on that right, right leg. And then you swing your left hand down, then forward and up. And you're looking under that left arm. So you're staying here. The left leg is nice and straight. The right leg bends. Your right arm is on your right uh, leg, upper leg. You can stay there or you can move the right hand down towards the ground can have it to the outside of the right leg or the inside of the right leg, doesn't matter so much. From there you're reaching, you're just lengthening that left side, just see how long you can make that whole left side of the body. From there left hand comes back to left hip, you look down, keep uh, the bend in the right leg as you stand nice and tall and then from there your waist is turning towards the front of the mat, you bend your right leg, your left hand and right hand go forward and up for a warrior one. So you're bending front leg, straightening back leg quite strong on that, on both legs really, reaching those hands high, that's warrior one, warrior two, right arm forward, left arm back, so you see here I'm not telling you how to breathe during the practice, I'm not saying big inhales, big exhales, it's all just about you keeping your breath as calm as you can as we do these postures. So you're as calm as you can, you're not holding your breath, you're just breathing calmly as if we were just having a chat. In warrior two, you're looking towards that right index finger if you can. Hands are reaching wide, mat is being stretched. Then we try, and we'll try and straighten that right leg a little bit. So the right leg begins to straighten a little bit. Check that the right knee is pointing the same direction as the right toes. Left hand is just onto your left hip. And then for triangle pose, you feel like you're pulling up on your right chin with your right hand. You're, you're, uh, you look a little to the left, your left shoulder lifts towards the ceiling, and then left hand lifts in the air. So you could do this with right hand on the ground, but I find it better with just right hand on the right shin. And don't just slam your weight on that right leg. Pull up on that right shin with the right hand. Face is relaxed. This is the triangle pose. So right hand is on the left shin. Then we'll try the left hand down on the left shin. So left hand lowers down slowly towards that left shin. The right hand comes up towards the right hip. Let's change direction so you can see a bit easier. So from here, your waist is turned towards the front, your left hand comes down towards the right shin. You look a little bit towards the right, maybe you can touch the ground to the outside of the right foot. Your chest is turning towards the right, the face is relaxed, your right shoulder clears up in the air. Maybe the right hand lifts in the air, but don't force. Face relaxed. Breath as calm as you can. Right hand lowers to right hip. Look down, we bend that right leg, bring the right hand down by that to the ground. So we've got a hand either side of the front foot, we come up onto the ball of the back foot, and we, uh, we stay here for a moment. We bend that front leg, try and sneak the hands a little bit further forward, bring the head a little bit further forward past your right foot, lift the back leg in the air then, lift it nice and high, try and straighten the back leg if possible. Face relaxed, stay here, or else perhaps hands come off the ground, you're balancing. Maybe reach the hands up and back. If 
feel like you're flying. Face relaxed. And then hands come together. Your left leg comes forward either to the ground or you bring it up towards the chest and stand tall. It's quite tricky. Then you lower that right leg, to, that left leg to the ground and then you stand nice and tall. Give the legs a little bit of a shake up and try the other side then. So the right leg is gonna step back then, okay? So you bend the knees, your hands come together just for a moment, just for concentration. Bend both legs and lift the right knee up towards the right elbow. Your right leg reaches back behind you. Trying to feel a balance. Lower it nice and slowly so you're under control. It's not just dropping with gravity. And from there you find a nice balance. So let's just check out what's happening with the feet here. You're using quite a bit of your mat here, okay? Your right toes are not turned directly to the side, they're turned a little bit towards the front. Then you turn your belly button and your waist towards the front of the mat. The front leg bends so that the left knee is maybe just over the left heel. You can be longer in your stance, makes it harder. So your left hip and left knee are on the same height if you wish. Or you can go a little bit shorter and don't bend so much in that front leg, that makes it a little bit easier. So you take it to where you can manage and still be uh, breathing calmly, be able to talk as if, if we were gonna have a chat here, you'd still be able to talk. So if you feel like you're holding your breath, you've gone beyond the point where you're gonna be doing yourself any good. So here we are, your waist is turning towards the front, you bend the front leg, your left arm comes onto the left thigh, just like we did on the other side. Your right hand swings down, then it re reaches forward and up, and we're looking under that uh, right arm. So I usually do, do it that way rather than just throw the right arm up and over because that tends to squash the neck a little bit. So the right arm goes down, then it goes forward and up. And we lengthen and reach out through the right hand. You push down through that right foot. Your right side of the trunk is nice and long. Stay here or else left hand goes to outside of the left heel. If you want, you can have it inside if you choose. Doesn't really make too much difference. So you're lengthening that right side as much as you can. Bending that front leg, straightening the back leg. This is where you're getting your back of leg flexibility in the right leg now. Right hand comes back to right hip. Left hand comes up onto the thigh perhaps, helping you sit tall. You keep that bend in the front leg. Your belly button is turning towards the front. Then your hands reach forward and up for warrior one. You look down for an easier balance. Look up if the balance is there and you find yourself in a nice, strong warrior posture. So in all of these postures, as we change to warrior two, left arm forward, right arm back, you're trying to feel like you're strong. You're pushing the mat apart. You've got energy going out through your hands, energy going out through your feet, but you're being as calm as you can. So we're being as calm as we can in these postures, which we could be pretty stressed out in. We could feel that they're quite hard and strong, but we're trying to be as calm as we can in these pressure situations. Then we go towards straightening that left leg for triangle pose. So your right hand goes to right hip. Your left leg goes pretty straight. It's okay if it doesn't straighten fully. Left hand just lightly touches the left shin. Feels like it's drawing up on it, pulling up on it. Your left shoulder turns a little bit towards the right because that helps turn the chest towards the right and the right shoulder gets up out of your, your, your right side of the face to clear up towards the ceiling. Maybe the right hand goes up in the air. Now for some of us, just looking down to the right is better. If you look towards the right thumb, some of us just, our necks get a little bit bothered. So don't force, it's not gonna be that great that it's worth hurting your neck. Looking down is perfect. So legs pretty straight here. You're not slamming your weight on from your upper body onto that left leg. You feel like you're pulling up that left shin with the left hand. Then we change to the revolve triangle pose, so right hand down to right hip, look down. You can bend the front leg a little bit, maybe bring the hands down, it's a little bit easier, and shorten the stance ever so slightly, makes it easier again. So from here, your back toes are turned a little bit more towards the front. You try and turn your waist towards the front, and then the right hand either goes to that left shin, or it goes towards the ground, and then the left hand comes up towards the left hip. So here your spine is long. Your front leg is pretty straight, but don't worry if it doesn't go fully straight. Your spine is long, you look a little to the left, the left shoulder lifts up, face relaxed. Back leg pretty straight here. Left leg eventually goes fully straight, spine is long. Maybe left hand up in the air for the triangle pose, but don't force. 
the left hand lowers down towards the ground both hands either side of the front foot you come on up onto the ball of the back foot and then you slide that back foot in a little bit then lift that back leg in the air you be as calm as you can left leg is bent giving you a nice stable base maybe the hands come off maybe the hands reach back this is a version of warrior three you're feeling really strong you can bring the hands out and forward but it puts a lot of pressure on us to do that hands back makes it easier then fingertips together right leg comes forward either onto the ground or else the right knee comes up towards the right elbow a bit harder then right leg lowers down give the legs a little bit of a shake out all right so that's quite a strong standing uh, sequence so far okay let's just try a few balances before we move so from here we'll try the right leg we'll keep that on the ground the left toes just lift up and then the hands come together left knee comes up towards the left elbow and see if you can make the left knee come closer to the chest without the use of the hands so you're trying to lengthen your back as the knee comes towards the chest maybe bring the hands towards the ground you can hold the shin at any time if you need to okay then hold that chin with both hands bring the knee in towards the chest right leg is a little bit bent you can straighten more if you're really comfortable but it's hard so don't overdo good from there you can have a little bit of fun maybe hold the heel bring the point the toes down lengthen the left leg a little bit more don't overdo leg can be fully straight if you like if you're really comfortable you can be standing tall with right hand on right hip left leg pretty straight bend the leg a little makes it easier hold that left shin lower it down give the legs a little bit of a shake out move the hips around a little bit might feel good we'll try the right toes on the ground so here either take your hands together and just lift the right knee a touch that could be loads or else if you can you're trying to get this right knee to learn how to come towards the chest without the use of the hands and this teaches you to lengthen your back out it's like a standing sit up actually because you're shortening at the front a bit but no need to suck the abdomen tricky posture hands go down hold the shin then stand tall maybe the knee stays close in by the chest but don't overdo keep a bend in the standing leg hold the right heel point the toes down makes it easier knee and chest stays touching maybe lift the foot a little bit don't overdo bend that right leg stand nice and tall for a moment then lower it down give the legs a little bit of a shake out well done so we're going to come towards the ground then so come towards sitting so just uh, take a hand behind you perhaps as you come towards sitting find a nice balance so in this one in sitting if you try sitting tall for a moment just try with the toes pointing towards the ceiling draw up on the kneecap sit tall hands go down palms are down and straight it's quite difficult to sit tall with straight legs and with the arms straight so what I suggest is until your back of leg flexibility uh, improves maybe it's really good but for those of you who feel this is a little uncomfortable just bend the knees a little bit and you feel like you're pulling the mat towards you with those heels so pull down into the ground with those heels you'll see the knees bend and then just come to the fingertips and sit nice and tall here relax the abdomen for a moment be nice and long in the spine you're long in the front and back of the spine staying here for a moment or two see how the neck is feeling maybe lift one side and the other well done and we're going to go into a little uh, forward bend so you press down with the heels keep the knee bent and then you take the hands by the shins maybe take the sides of the feet if you wish and you're trying to get your knees and chest together just like we did earlier in standing so we're staying there lift the elbows a little bit just push them wide and forward don't overdo don't pull yourself strongly forward stay here feel like you're lengthening the back look towards the ground just lengthen the spine knees and chest touch is good you could put the head on the shins but don't force so if it's okay for you you can feel like you're going forward and down and the forehead goes towards the shins now we lift the chest straighten the arms a little straighten the legs a little take the hands behind you and then you bend your legs until your soles of feet come towards the ground 
So your fingers are facing forward. Shoulders, they feel like going back perhaps, but just to protect you in the shoulders, try and press those shoulders forward towards the knees. Then raise the waist up. Find a nice balance, just move the hips around a little bit. Not throwing the head back and down. And there you can try the left knee towards the left shoulder. Again, it just teaches the, the back to be strong. Lengthens the back out, should I say. It, 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 uh, it teaches the muscles on the front to shorten and it helps you lengthen the back. If you're feeling really comfortable, you could bring your right hand forward. It's a tricky one. Right hand goes down and lower. Give the hips a little bit of a shake out. If you're having any issues with the, with the wrist, it feels too much putting pressure on them. When you put your hands on the ground, try and push down with the wrists and press down with the fingers and that will stabilize you at the wrists. So on the other side then we're trying, you don't have to turn around, I'm just turning around so you can see. So your, your fingers are facing forward, you push down with the wrists, press down with the fingers, shoulders push forward, raise the waist a little bit, just see how the hips are feeling here. One side might be easier than the other. So your right knee is coming towards your right shoulder. Find a nice balance here. So your shoulders are pushing forward. Option if you wish to take the left hand forward. And lowering down. From there we'll hug the shins with the hands. Take the feet a little bit away from your hips just so you can sit taller easier. And then let your abdomen move forward as if it's going, your belly button is going out there between the, between the legs. Then lift the chest a little bit, and then without throwing the head back, we're gonna lift the chin. We're gonna move the throat forward and chin up a little bit. So throat forward and chin up is different than head back and chin up. So it's head and throat forward and chin up. And this makes it okay to lengthen the front of the spine a little bit without squashing the back of the neck, which is often a tender place for us. From there, we'll take a little twist. We're gonna take that right leg in so that your sole of the right foot is on the ground. Your left leg, you can have that bent a little bit so it doesn't feel like you're falling back. Sit nice and tall. Your left hand wraps around that left shin. Your right hand comes towards your lower back and you sit tall here. So your knee and chest are together. You're sitting nice and tall. You can have your hand behind you. Give yourself a little bit of height as you twist and you're holding around the shin. If you're really used to this, maybe you can sneak that left hand over and to the outside of that uh, right thigh, and then you hold the right hip with the, uh, with the left hand, and feel yourself sitting tall, taking a nice twist. You look forward, and slowly release that right leg. Then we're gonna just um, work on getting our right leg behind the head. We're working towards it. It could take 30, 40, 50 years, don't worry. So your right leg lifts a little bit, you hold the right knee, bending the left leg helps, and then you bring the right knee back in under the right arm. So here you're pulling that right knee back a little bit, you're sitting tall, maybe take the left foot off the ground if you want to balance. Play there. If you're quite used to this, maybe your right hand comes in under that right leg, and you can have it on your right arm in under the right shoulder. If you're uh, used to this, you can let the right leg straighten a little bit. The right hand comes towards the ground. You hold the outside of the right foot with that right hand, with the left hand. And then playing a little bit, your right leg. Either, if you're getting used to this, just play with it here for a moment. If you're really used to having this coming into some of these more advanced positions, your right hand goes down, your left hand goes down, then your left leg comes towards the right foot, just sneaks up on top of that right leg, and you try to lean forward, and the feet go out towards the side. So here, you've got the, you're in lower plank effectively, but your legs are in a bit of an unusual position. And from there, come back towards sitting, and gently release. Give the legs a little bit of shake out. Left leg to do then. So we take the left knee towards the chest. One side might be a little bit more tricky than the other. Left leg, left heel lifts a little bit and we draw the left knee under the left arm. Move the leg around a bit. Base relaxed. 
from there you might take the left arm in under that left leg hold the left heel with that hand the back of the left arm is holding the back of the uh, left leg you can stay there or else if you're more used to this your right palm comes on top of the uh, left shin maybe left hand down your, your leg can straighten a little bit so you can just hold it up there or else if you're more used to it your right hand comes behind the head a little bit and the left leg gets a bit straighter maybe not fully straight or not super flexible at least not today so the left leg bends move that around a little bit like you're just rocking it out if you want to go and play and do some of the more adventurous stuff if it's right for you maybe that left hand goes to the ground the right leg comes in under that left leg and that's enough stay here maybe you just lift the hips and find a balance there stay or else right hand comes over that um, left leg you push down with the hands, your feet can be on the ground as you lift the hips or else if you're used to it, you lean a little forward, the legs go out towards the side. So the shoulder, the head and the elbows are all the same height off the ground. Find a nice balance and come through. Then hold the shins, ease out your breath a little bit, sit a bit taller, find a nice balance here. And then we'll just do a bit of playing in the balance. So this we hug the knees in towards the chest, cross the legs, snuggle the knees in close to you. Then maybe hands reach out for the um, boat posture or Navasana. So from here, you press the inner knees against each other. That helps to stop you falling back. Palms face down makes it a bit easier too. Stay there or else you uncross the legs if you're a bit more flexible. But you'll notice as you go straighter in the legs, you might feel a bit more pull in the back, pulling you towards the ground. So keep the legs bent as much as you need to so you can sit nice and tall and reach the hands forward. Soles of feet go down, hands go back behind you, raise the waist, move the hips around a little bit, see how things are feeling after that last piece. And lowering down. Then we'll just try that twist to the other side because I actually forgot to do it on the other side. Sorry about that. So we'll sit nice and tall and we'll do that twist on the other side. The right arm wraps around the left shin, left hand to the lower back. Sit nice and tall here. Ruined the sequence for everyone. I think we'll be okay. So we'll sit nice and tall with this twist. If you need that left hand on the ground, that's okay to sit tall. If you can manage to sit up, twist, and get the right shoulder to the outside of that left leg, then you hold on there with the to the left uh, hip with the right hand in a nice twist maybe you don't even need the hand on the ground behind you quite a strong twist then gently put the left hand on the ground be slow to ease yourself out of that twist and just uh, take the hands behind you just give the legs a little bit up and down fanning them like a little butterfly then we come towards finishing sequence so from here we'll just cross the legs and put the sides feet on the ground now for some of us this is too uncomfortable definitely for me as i was getting into yoga so this is one option where you can be seated, seated in a cross-legged position you could be in half lotus or full lotus if you're really used to it but i like for like with the feet apart and heels on the ground just so that for those of us who are a bit tight in the back of the legs and the hips in the back it's a little bit easier to sit up and this last bit is the salutation of the hands so what we do is we just lengthen the back and we just get a movement of the hands just to, to focus us so it's called Padma which means hands and uh, Padma Namaskar uh, Namaskar means an offering of respect to ourselves so it's using the hands to a to offer respect to ourselves and go through a bit of a sequence like the Surya Namaskar is the salute to the Sun this is the salute to ourselves using our hands so from here, our back of hands come together, thumbs come towards the heart, and then you reach the hands up and you lift, sit up tall, reach those hands nice and high, then hands come down, back of hands come together, you're lengthening your back out, thumbs to belly button, and then you sit tall and the hands come, the elbows come by your side and you bring your hands out like an offering, and then your hands go down. And again, back of hands together, thumbs towards heart, and then we lengthen up look up hands go down back of hands together thumbs to belly button and the elbows come in and the hands come out like an offering 
hands up, back of hands together, thumbs to heart, and up. Hands come down, and back of hands together, thumbs to belly button, elbows in, and hands come out like an offering. So we usually attach a bit of a meaning to this when we're teaching in the classes or teaching if we teach to kids classes, they, they like this meaning too. This back of hands coming together is you're taking your thumbs towards your heart and you're offering respect to yourself. And when you offer respect to yourself, then you can grow. So you reach up and then your hands come down by your side. And then you take those back of hands and you take it to your center, right to the belly button, right by the heart. and just below the heart to the belly button. And then you take your hands and you open them out like an offering of respect. And this offering of respect is to yourself. And the offering of respect is also the same position as the receiving posture. So the offering and the receiving postures are the same. So by offering respect to yourself, you're leaving yourself open to receive that respect from yourself, which is really what this whole practice is about. It's an offering of respect to yourself. Try it one more time. Back of hands together, thumbs to heart, and lengthen. Offering that respect to yourself. Then back of hands together, thumbs to belly button, elbows in, and the hands come out and we hold the offering of respect to yourself. And then perhaps you offer it, maybe close the eyes, Perhaps offer that respect to other people who might come to your mind, family, friends, or the general community. So you're both offering respect to yourself as part of that community. And thinking of others too. To finish, you can choose to put the palms on the knees and perhaps sit tall. If you're used to sitting in some sort of cross-legged position, you can, you can sit for a few minutes if you choose. Or else, uh, come to lying down, where you allow yourself to lengthen the legs out, bend the knees and come down towards lying on the back. If you try the soles of feet apart, turn the toes in and let the inner knees rest against each other, that tends to be a nice place to allow the back to take the support of the ground. Traditionally, it's, it's said to turn the palms up. I find for people when their shoulders are a little bit tight and the neck might be a little bit tight too, the palms facing down makes it a little bit easier, just broadens the back a little bit. And then you can either rest there for a few moments or else let the legs lengthen out, provided that it doesn't make your back feel uncomfortable. If your back of neck or your lower back is are uncomfortable, it's a good idea to just put a little pillow in under the lower back. It's okay if you get up and grab a pillow now, or put a little pillow in under the legs. But you let the abdomen really soften. You soften the abdomen as much as possible. You soften the face as much as possible. Forehead soft, face relaxed. And just let the abdomen rise and fall. Let the abdomen rise and fall and make it as soft as possible. You can have the hands, fingers on the abdomen or palms facing down like I suggested earlier. Soften the muscles of your face. So soften at the forehead, at the eyes, at the throat, at the jaw. You might like to move the jaw around a little bit. But the key to really getting your body into a state where it gathers energy and takes good relaxation is to soften the abdomen more. So your abdomen can gently rise and gently fall. Chest is not moving. Just watch now with your attention you just put your attention just to watching your breath you're not trying to pull the air in you're not trying to push it out 
you're just observing the natural rise and fall of your breath as the abdomen is soft and gently rises by itself and falls by itself. Gentle rise and fall. A really calm breath. And this is how we gather energy. So if the mind is busy, there's a lot on the mind. Just telling the body by breathing diaphragmatically, by having the abdomen soft, by letting the abdomen rise and fall, you're telling the body that, look, everything is okay, things are calm, things are relaxed, and you create an environment of calm for yourself. And just by focusing the mind on that gentle rise and fall of your breath, the mind stops running with the regular thoughts, Whatever is important or pressing or worrying you, perhaps, those thoughts tend to come back again and again. But by just focusing the mind on the natural rise and fall of the breath, the mind takes a break from the regular thought. And is focused just on yourself just on doing good for yourself, tuning in and listening to yourself, your own body, and you're linking the mind and your body together, all with the intention of doing good for yourself. Give yourself another half minute to really soften. And as we start to ease towards moving, just move the toes and move the fingers to begin. Maybe turn the toes in and out, just kind of loosening out the hips a little. Then bend the legs until the soles of feet are on the ground. Take the hands to the abdomen, just keep the abdomen nice and soft. You're gonna roll over to your right hand side. So just put your right hand out to the side and then roll over onto that right hand side, put your left hand on the ground to allow yourself to push into the ground and come up to sitting very gently. Find yourself in sitting. You can have soles of feet on the ground, eyes closed as you hold the shins. You can sit in some cross-legged position if you wish. And just finish with the eyes closed just by offering respect to yourself. saluting the effort that you've made today, just to give yourself a few moments to tune the body into the mind and bring those two together. At the end of a yoga practice, often people say namaste, which means I offer my humble respect to you. Uh, here where I teach in Ireland, uh, we use the word slantia, which means uh, to your health. So at the end of the practice, I offer my respect to you and thanks to you and wish you good health, slantia. Thank you for joining me today doing the practice. Please uh, feel free to do this practice again and again join in and do it as I instruct or else just go back on the video and have a look at it just so that you can see how the, how it's uh, how, it, how the body kind of moves and how I'm instructing it because sometimes it's hard to follow the 
uh, verbal instructions and uh, visual instructions at the same time. So sometimes if you're just not doing it and just watching it, it can, uh, you can follow it a little bit easier. So thank you very much. This is just a video uh, from the Yoga Shala. The yogashala.net is our website and uh, we offer it as a gift to you and hope you enjoy it.